Remember the good old days when we used to get a new 3D action platformer game every single year? I mean, if we simply look at the Ratchet & Clank franchise alone on the PS2, we had the OG game, Going Commando, Up Your Arsenal, Dead Lot, and Size Matters. And that's not even counting the other games in the genre, like Jack and Daxter 1, 2, and 3. These days, we're lucky to get one or two games a generation from these types of franchises. What a load of bullshit. So if you're tired of waiting every five years to get your hands on a new Ratchet and Clank style game, you may be in luck because Evil Rapture, a small studio, has taken their crack at delivering a game that's a love letter to the six generation action platformers with a Kimbot. Now, before we dive into this, I want to state up front, I was provided a key to this game through Key Miller, and there will be some slight spoilers in this review. With that out of the way, let's dive into a Kimbot and see if this game actually lives up to the legacy that it's inspired by, or if it's just a rusty bucket of bolts. Chip ah! said an Xe partners in saving the universe! Our journey begins with our two unlikely heroes, Shipset, the overly confident, wisecracking, talkative companion. Basically, your typical comic relief character. We appreciate your support, Exe. You're welcome, humble moron. All in a day's work for a legend like me. And Exe, the battled hardened mercenary, a shoot first and ask questions type. And unlike Shipset, he takes more of the strong, silent approach. As we are first introduced to both of these characters, we fire them in the back of a prison transport, on their way to be delivered to the proper authorities that rules over this universe. Although, Shipset has other plans as he comes up with a half-baked plan and uses his abilities as being annoying and his motor mouth to distract the pilot long enough, causing the ship to crash. Three, two, one, duck! Huh? Being prisoner escapees is the first unfortunate circumstance that falls upon our duo. And what would imagine, the two are immediately at each other's throats. I never want to see, hear, or think about you ever again. You got it? Ah, fine! With that attitude, I'll be happy to never see your face again. <sighs> Let's just go. This type of banter continues through much of the game, and it's made perfectly obvious in the first few levels that the two characters cannot wait to go their separate ways. And as per usual in this story dynamic, they go from hating each other to basically being best friends. I mean, it's a story we've seen a million times. It's the classic tale of two polar opposite characters that get stuck together due to unforeseen circumstances. As they go through challenges, they come out with an incredible, unbreakable bond. It's the plot to every single buddy cop movie in existence, which makes it all the more bewildering why a Kimbot comes up short. Every time these characters have a supposed bonding moment, the dialogue feels out of place, and it feels like they're breaking character, especially when it comes to Exe. It just feels like the story and the friendship buildup between Exe and Shipset could have used a bit more fleshing out. That being said, I do feel as if the voice acting was very solid, and not just for the two main characters, but for all the characters you come across in the story. In fact, it's not just the voice acting that was good. The soundtrack was actually pretty great as well. And while the overall plot may feel a bit generic and you're most likely going to predict the entire story, it did do a good job at capturing that old school PS2 era humor that one may expect from this genre. It even had some moments that made me chuckle a little. Extraction team ready. Mission start. Extract special agents Exian shipset and the artifact. Let's do this, bots. Yeah! But let's switch gears and talk about the meat and potatoes of the game and discuss the actual gameplay, which Akimbot offers a ton of variety of. Not only do we get a lot of 3D platforming sections, we get a ton of third person shooter action. And I would say these two elements are actually pretty evenly divided throughout the campaign. On top of this, we get vehicle sections like driving our car as we have to race through a battlefield or dodge traps or just race the enemies. And a car is not the only wheel we get behind. 
We even get sections where we take to the stars and fly a spaceship, as we have to dodge and weave our way through asteroid fields. Or dogfight enemy ships. Hell, we even get to take our hand at tackling a big Star Destroyer sized battle station. There are a ton of mini games tossed into the fray as well, mixing up the action even further. However, this is a very on rails experience. Basically, Shipset sums up the entire game in the first 10 seconds. So where are we going anyway? Straight forwards! What other way can we even go? The Kimbot feels as wide as an ocean and as deep as a puddle. The platforming is extremely linear. When you want a wall run, you simply snap to a predetermined wall on a predetermined path. When you want to use the grappling hook, is on a predetermined point and basically flings you in a very specific direction. When you fly in your ship, it's on a set path. You could control where you shoot and how you dodge incoming debris, but you cannot alter the ship's course. And when you drive in the car, you're on a track. If you try to go off the beaten path, you usually just die. Personally, I don't mind a game that's more linear and more on the rails. I'm just for warning you guys that this is what the game is. So if you're expecting a ton of exploration and more deep gameplay mechanics, you're going to be severely disappointed. But lastly, let's talk about the other major gameplay aspect in this title, and that would be the gunplay. Ambassador is still waiting for you at Echo Point. Considering the uh, situation, you'll surely need this. <laughs> now this, I can get behind. Ooh, big gun. And I'll, I'll admit it, the gunplay actually felt half decent. It was pretty enjoyable, mixing up shooting action with the really cool dashing and double jump abilities that Exe gets. However, there's just an over lack of weapons. Throughout the story, you come across four different guns. An assault rifle, a sniper rifle, a rocket launcher, and a minigun. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, hey, four weapons is actually not bad, especially for a game that's a shooter and a platformer. However, you're most likely only going to be using one or two of these items and ignoring the other ones completely. In fact, I found the sniper rifle to be the best weapon where I barely even touched the other three. Now, on top of the main guns, you also get access to a special weapon. But once again, there is an issue. The ammo on the special weapon drains incredibly fast that I hardly even bothered with it. Which is really bizarre because it feels as if the devs attempted to make these special weapons a main focus of the game. Hell, you even come across shops. And one would think this is where you could buy additional weapons, upgrades, grenades, etc. Hell, even Exe acts as if that's what the shop is meant to be. Providing us something of actual use. Perhaps weapons, grenades, anything. Except the shop does none of that. The only thing it does is set it up so you go buy other additional special weapons and then update them. Which really doesn't make a ton of sense because you only could equip one special weapon type at a time. And how do you swap to a different unique weapon? You have to be at the shop. So most likely you're going to pick one weapon, upgrade it and simply ignore the shop from that point on. If you decide to even use any of these weapons, it would have been so much better if you could buy upgrades or attachment to the four main guns in the game, thus giving the shop a better reason to exist and allowing you a reason to even further mix up the gunplay and weapons you play with. Overall, while I do have a lot of issues with this game, I want to make it abundantly clear. I had a complete blast playing it. It may not be the new king of the genre, but it is a title I do recommend. For 20 bucks, it does have a lot to offer. Just go in expecting a very linear on rails experience. In my opinion, I hope this game gets a sequel because while this one may be rough around the edges, I definitely see the potential for this to become a really good franchise. But I would love to hear what you all think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you made it this far and did enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you are new, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon. As for me, I got a ton of work to do, so I'm gonna get back to the grind and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.